Can you talk about the distinction between material dominance and oh. rhetorical dominance? Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. Okay, so here's the thing. If you take a look at the real world, of, I mean, of, there, there there's some sense in which woke complaints about the rule of rich white males is true. It's like, how so? It says, well, you go and take a look at the heads of, of major corporations, the heads of major science institutes. You look at just who owns the, who owns the highest income. You can see that all these things that white males are greatly overrepresented, all right? So in some sense, then you could say that, well, complaints are true. But there's another sense in which they're totally false. Namely, if you were to go give a speech saying, do you know who our society owes almost all of its goodness to? Rich white males. This is one where the cancellation would be at the thermonuclear level. So it's like, hmm, that's odd. And on the other hand, you can go take a look at your typical woke professor. On the one hand, their income is not very good. You know, like the, maybe they're earning like the median income or a bit more. So like, you know, some, some professor of African-American history, he's not generally earning a lot of money. He's at some crummy school nobody's heard of. So you might say in one sense, he has very little dominance. On the other hand, he feels very free to speak his mind and to say everything that he thinks is good and bad. And people are afraid to contradict that guy. Right. Certainly his students are afraid to contradict him, but even if you were just to meet this person in conversation and he started going and talking about white fragility, it's a pretty brave person that will go and start arguing with the professor of African-American studies and say, no, you're wrong. Uh, you're not being discriminated against. Actually, it's being discriminated for. It's just that your success is low. Which and is so, why it's always the, each side is feeling like a minority. Yeah. Right? Because one feels yeah. like oppressed by the rhetorical dominance, like on mm -hmm. the left. Right? Yeah. Because they have like the academia and media and university. And then the other side feels mm -hmm. oppressed because they feel the right has so much material wealth and money power. And right. Like that, right. Yeah. So from the right wing point of view, they can say, hey, look, the left runs the government half the time. They run the culture all the time. I'm oppressed. But on the other hand, people on the left could just look and say, hey, well, look at this incredible over representation of white males and maybe Asian males they'll tack on now and how they are at the top of almost every major area of society, especially areas where their money is. So they're the ones that are doing great. And we're oppressed. Anyway, so in this essay, I said, well, why don't we just split the difference and say there's two senses that we're talking about and say, look, there's material dominance where you've just got high income and you get to run and you run things like you run business, run a science institute, uh, you know, you know, that kind of thing. But there's another sense of dominance, which is that you get to shoot your mouth off and people are afraid of, to, afraid to contradict. So I call the first one material dominance and the second one rhetorical dominance. Then I noticed that basically in a dictatorship, that's where you get both dominances together, right? So Saudi Arabia, all right, the Saudi royal family, they got full material dominance. They're worth hundreds of billions of dollars. They've got palaces, they've got yachts. So they got you know, like incredible riches, but they also can totally control the politics of the country. And furthermore, Everyone who wants to keep his head on his shoulder says they're great, ordained by Allah. So they got rhetorical and material locked together, fused perfectly. And that's the same thing like in the old Soviet Union, you've got the party apparatchiks. They run the country. They are the richest people in the country. They're the ideologists. Anyone who contradicts them can expect Siberia or worse. Or just go back to a medieval absolute monarchy. Yeah, well. You got the king, he's got his palaces, he's got money. He's also ordained by God and every churchman who wants to keep preaching and keep his sinecure had better go and say, oh yeah, God totally thinks Louis XIV is an awesome guy. God saved the king. Um, so on the one, one hand, you can say a sign of a place that isn't a total dictatorship is that least material and rhetorical dominance are totally aligned and there's two different kinds of things going on. Um, and then the other thing is just to realize that there's basically both sides are kind of crybabies because they are going and acting like they're totally oppressed and powerless. Like, oh, there's like two different senses. You've got something, you're not really totally oppressed.